It's December 30th, everybody. It is almost time to celebrate a new year. By the time you hear this, of course, the celebrations are over, the glasses are put away, the ham is eaten. You're thinking about your summer vacation. Yeah, you're probably already looking into, when is Easter? When's spring break? But still, right now, we're resolving to have another terrific year next year, just like the one we've just had. Full of adventure and fun, and we're sure hoping that that is what you are embarked on by the time you hear this. And let us know about it. Send us a note talking about all the joy you're having, because we would love to hear that. So here we go. We're going to talk a bunch, we're going to have some laughs, and we hope you stick with us. Hey, um, you guys have... Air, air tag. Oh, air tag. Oh, yes, we got the air tag. Yeah, for for luggage. And Absolutely. Stuff, right? you yes. Have. So if you buy, if you buy four, you save some money. Could I give those as Christmas presents? You yes. bet. Oh, you could, and yep. they can each be programmed. Yeah, and we've yep. we've done that. We've bought four and given one to Hannah and one. Yeah, to yeah. Her oh, okay. Because I saw they make a noise, right? So you can put it on your dog's collar, and if you if he's trained to to know that that noise means a treat wherever he is, you press a little. Well, that's cool. I didn't know that. Air tag noise, and he'll come. Oh, I've never thought about that use. I just. That's that's pretty cool. cool. I like that. Well, I had uh, my New York Yankees wallet. That was my dad's wallet. I gave it to him as a gift. And then, so I inherited it. uh, So I put an air tag in the wallet just to see what's it like to sit on this thing. And sure enough, it's just a little too bulky. And so uh, I bought one of these. This works with Apple's Find My. Listeners, it's a credit card sized tracker wallet tracker oh so um, so guys i'll hand this to you so you can see how big it is okay so i'm holding this thing and it is just as rj says it's credit card size and it's like if you stack maybe maybe three credit cards on top of each other it's about that thick but the immediate question is you got this because the air tag was too bulky for having in your wallet which you always carry in your back pocket which i get right but the other big attribute of your back pocket is it curves your wallet. Yes. What happens to this thing if it gets curved? Well, no, because it's so thin. The The wallet's fairly thin. This mm. is a new wallet, by the way. Mm. It's a new used wallet. So he's showing me his wallet is very thin. It's maybe half It's quite thin. Max. No, it does not uh, curve it at all. And it integrates with Find My, right? So I'll just play the sound. Oh. Treat? Oh. And that... <laughs> Have you actually taught him that already? <laughs> oh, no, but he's quite interested. And that actually sounds off pretty well. So what happened was one day, Sue and I were looking for my wallet around the house and I had put it in a slot that makes no sense to ever put a wallet in. Yeah. It's where a re- it's a remote control slot that we have sitting beside us yeah. you know, for the TV viewing. And I was just like not thinking, I guess. And then the next thing you know, that's this rabbit hole I went down. And then I ordered a $13 Amazon wallet, super thin wallet. And uh, that one I ended up not returning. But it's Sue found this one that I'm using right now that looks like fake eel skin, maybe. It was just sitting up. We don't even know whose it was or when we got it. It's like 10 years old. And so th- this is one I'm using. And the. Uh, well, you just had that kicking around? Yeah. And the Amazon one's uh, up in the. Uh, up in a drawer and it'll maybe get found 15 years from now and we'll go, what's this thing? Well, the irony for me is almost the second thing I did. So I got air tags, I put them in stuff and within about a day and a half, I disabled the notifications because I, this was on that Portugal trip. Yeah. And so I, every single day I was leaving my bag and with my passport in it. So two of the air trackers that I was using every single day, I was becoming separated from them first thing in the morning because they get loaded onto the van to be driven to your next stop and i was pretty sick of getting notifications frequently through the day oh that it, they've it been tells left you behind. when you're going away from it yeah when you lose bluetooth contact with that air tag you get a notification that says it's been left behind it gives you the last location that it received right bluetooth contact with whatever. oh so you just turn it off if you're using it for luggage and it goes on the plane yeah you just you just so then but once you've turned it off, then the question becomes, do you have the wit to go turn it on again when you're in the airport and you don't want your bag to go to yeah, Syracuse that's right. or someplace, that's right. you know? Did you have the wit to do that? No, I didn't. I just came Syracuse. And the other thing that would happen is your t- air tag, if, if somebody in the driving the van has an iPhone, which quite, yeah. 
they, they're going to start getting the notifications. Hey, somebody's tracking you. They probably get that for like three of them because oh, there's imagine. probably that many people who have them. Oh, I would guess there's more. Yeah. So oh, that's, that's kind of interesting. interesting. Yeah. They never asked us to disable Wait, it. Wait, say that again? Why well, would the driver, if he had an iPhone? So Apple doesn't want you to use your AirTag to track your ex-spouse because it's stalk. harassment, right? To stalk. So they have a system set up where if you're not with your tracker, but it seems to be following them for more than 10 minutes. Like another Apple device. It oh. their, their phone gives them a warning. Oh, and the air tag beeps so that if it's hidden somewhere, they can go find it and crush it. That is interesting because they never asked us to disable our air tags at all. They, and you would think if the driver, any of the three people who drove the van had an Apple device in their pocket. Yeah. I mean, there was 12 or 29 people on that tour, right? Yeah. I mean, Apple does okay in Europe, but they're nowhere near, There's iPhones are nowhere near as popular over there as mm. they are here. Interesting. So, yep. I didn't know they did that. That's kind of, and totally again, makes sense that they should. Interesting. Listeners, KJ just texted us some, what I think are pretty remarkable works of art. Now, did you do those uh, pieces there, KJ? Yes. They're fantastic. Um, let's start with the uh, mushroom listeners. If you look at your screen right now on certain podcast apps, you will see a beautiful mushroom uh or you can go to the website and see it there the title is amanita muscaria yes which is a type of uh, hallucinogenic mushroom uh yes i believe parts of it are edible i that, mean hallucinogenic that is and you, you that, painted this beautiful yeah and that's in uh, that's just up the street is where you saw it or is it there was a forest of them up on lakewood like seriously a forest wow so there, I've just sent you the originals. Oh man, that is amazing. Yeah, what's happening yeah, there? Because that is fantastic. That mushroom one is really pretty good. Like what happened? How, what happened? I know. What happened exactly? Well, listeners, I strongly encourage you to look at these because it's kind of remarkable. Yeah, so right now uh, on your podcast app, we're showing huh. the uh, original photograph from which KJ painted the picture. So fantastic. So I wanted to do one uh, of the mushroom. And so both of those, what I did was I just kind of did the background with sort of the colors in, in my head or what I thought kind, was the kind, dirt. Kind of abstract background. Yeah, yeah. And mm. then, then I put the stuff on top. Very cool. And uh, like the, the other one is called... Um, well, they're called beauty berries, but there's a, a, a there's a Latin name for it. But you can see it's sort of in the photo; it's out of focus. And so I just thought, well, I would ju I'll do this background, and it'll just that'll just be my kind of out of focus. Nice. In the, you have little flecks of white. On oh, see that? Berries. Isn't that that's the detail in there? Yeah, right? Very nice to give that round, shiny surface look. No, no, it's no, it's actually there is flex of white the, on those or, berries on the original. It's I don't know what it is. Yeah, I, I assume it's not condensation. No, they're little growths or something. They look like um, salt. Yeah, but yeah. if you zoom in far enough, they look like they ha are little kind of growths coming out of the berry. Anyway, so skinny the be the berry one was oh. for Lucy. Oh. And I meant to make one for Dylan too, and I didn't. So I gave him a blank canvas for Christmas, and <laughs> his birthday's in February, so he'll get the finished product. Well, I especially like that mushroom one. I especially like how you manage the background in that. In the original picture, the background is really busy with grass and leaves, like like a yard, and he's sort of abstracted the background stuff. But it's sort of, don't you think? But it's, it's a pretty bit true. Like it's, it Alice looks like Wonderland. grass. Wonderland. Yeah, and it looks like grass and leaves. I oh, really like that. Like there's some movement to it. Yeah. Yeah, it's fantastic. I really like that. And I, I'll just say again, I'm really impressed with your technical skill here. I'm serious. Like, holy smokes. Well, and I found that it's, it actually is a lot of fun to do that. But I also found that once you're doing that, like the background is there, and I, I sort of did the prominent boulder leaves or whatever yeah. is there. Yeah. But I could have con just continued doing that and just thrown them in willy-nilly, right? You can just, 
and just make them different. I could have, like, like, once you start, it's just your imagination. Yeah, for sure. I don't think it's my imagination. Jeez. Oh, well, so it was. That's it was, just the it was experience. The experience kicking in, though. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. anyway, stay tuned for more. Hmm. Yeah, we'll look forward to that. These are really good. Jeez, I. Like I said, it's not that I thought whatever you did before was horrible. I thought what you did before, especially that abstract, was pretty good. And you guys have heard me go on and on about abstracts, and I kind of like that one. But but that was from a... It was a copy. Yeah, yeah. But this one is a, I don't know, stylized representation of a photograph, only it's not very stylized. It's pretty true to the photograph. Well, the background is just abstract and beautiful. I yeah. just love it. Yeah. Uh, let alone the foreground. I like the colors of your mushroom better than the real thing. <laughs> there is more of a gradient in the real one, right? Like, yeah. um, yeah, it's a fade more into tan and, and you chose, you've chosen a particular color of, uh, ochre. Is it? Go with that. Let's go with that. Sure. Whatever. I've got these little bottles of whatever. Oh, that looks sort of like the, that's oh, that. That's oh, it's, oh, it's deep red. It's called deep red. And that's the way to go with <laughs> art, right? Like you, like I could just see myself taking, a hundred hours to do a background because of just too much worry, you know, and, and it's the experience that gives you, you know, I can just do this or that and it'll, yeah. And then if it doesn't look interesting, I know how to make it look interesting afterwards. Or, you know, as long as nobody it. dies, paint over it, yeah. just start over, turn yeah. it all white again. And yeah. Yeah. Like some of those old masters, they do analysis and they find that they've painted over the thing like yeah. three times. You yeah. Yeah. So whatever happened to that uh, painting you were preparing, the commission for Susan, how was that? Oh, well, it was presented to her on her birthday. She loved it. She said, why is it called the commission? I said, well, you remember, you saw it on Marketplace or whatever. And, you, and I said, oh, I could, make, I could do that. And apparently she just didn't remember. <laughs> yeah, no, I think it was a, bit, a little bit of a communication problem on both sides there, I'd say. But uh, yeah. Now, has it changed enough uh, since the last time we saw it to uh, make a further photograph uh, to put up? Or the oh. last time was when I carried on and on and on. Oh, about, that's right. That's about right. non-existent uh, lakes and rivers. Oh, yeah. So, in your head. well, you can judge for yourselves. All right. I'll send it to you. All because, right. Yes, please. Uh, I got rid of that. <laughs> I know it was really bothering you, you when I was that. saying it. River misfortune. Yes, did you? It, or he that lake front of misfortune. He did not want that. It was, uh, I, I carried on a little bit too long about it, too. You guys want to do listener mail? Absolutely, I do. Listener mail, Lee of Courtney. Hi, Lee. Says, hi, dogs. Do you think Steve Miller will care that there were more than eight bars of the Joker played on this episode? Meaning episode 172, Shed Dog Barbie. Or is it so old that it's now just in the public domain? And I suppose, but think not likely, that you paid him royalties for the use of the song, in which case, ignore my first two sentences. Well, Lee, we in fact did not pay him royalties for that. But, as PJ was reminding me the other day, we have been pretty careful not to put more than a minimal amount, what I would call fair use of music, in our reviews and recommendations. So I think, I think we're going to be okay on that. And I thought it was 10 seconds. And I do have a sort of a apocryphal feel about that whole thing. Like how much is okay to use? What is the actual limit that is okay? Right. You're not likely to be prosecuted or right. prosecuted and, over. And Lee says eight bars. And I'm unfortunately not hyper aware of what a bar is. I know, but there's the 12 bar blues. And what, uh, what was the song in fly like an eagle? What Some one? people call me the space oh. cowboy. Do, 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 We're pushing up on our limit. How many bars was that? That's four bars. Yeah. Okay. Not, we got, we, let's do four more then. Yeah. Cause <laughs> Some it's not, call me the gangster of love. I've never heard that thing stated as a bar limit either. Like it's always a, a an elapsed time limit. I yes. Heard. So is that a fact Lee? Is that the law in... Oh. Jeez, you're British just, Columbia, Canada. You're taunting the gods at this point. Or is it apocryphal, which is a word I heard used just recently. Yeah. We will do some further research on that. We try to be careful about it. In fair use, I think you're okay. I do see some podcast 
um, hosting apps that say, hey, we will pull it down if we find more than certain amounts. But I think we've been pretty careful on that. But, you know, I guess if we hear from Steve or his representatives, we'll have to reconsider. The whole, well, then we'll know. Research, done. No, then we say, we're really big fans. <laughs> no, we love your work. We're up with this shit. We've brought at least six copies each of that album. Okay, we got uh, Sarah Puckett Financial Services. She works with Nerd Wallet, and she's giving out loans to individuals and companies at the low interest rate of 4%. And she's given us a form. So if we need to really develop oh, the podcast. She probably listens to Skinny's ideas, yeah. right? His, his money-making ideas. Uh-huh. And she's a financial and whatever. And that's why she asked for 4%. Yeah, I, yeah, I think. Yeah. She's got her finger on the shed dog pulse. She's not paying attention if that's what she is doing, because <laughs> basically her job is to take all the risks. My job is to just receive the money. <laughs> yeah, so, she's got it all wrong. Yeah, she's got it backwards, 100 yeah, so 4%, that's a pretty good rate for a loan. Yeah, it is. And I think she represents herself as being with Nerd Wallet. Thank you, Sarah. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Sarah. Love your work. On fire, <laughs> Love <laughs> your work. <laughs> on fire, Sarah. <laughs> Lee of Courtney on episode 174, Bath Bombs and Boogeymen. That sound like bookie men? Yeah, a little. Say, yeah, I don't know what boogie a bookie man, man is. <laughs> bookie men. No, we're giving nine to five on the patrons. That's yeah, a bookie man. It's a little guy and he picks up gold and he's a bookie man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hi, dogs, and welcome back after your hiatus. And we're we're on multiple hiatus. Yeah, that's a little point. embarrassing, isn't it? Uh, so you, somebody did notice. That yes. We, thank you for noticing, Lee. Yes. You obviously had been thinking about many, many things during the break, and we listeners benefit. So, to no one's surprise, I've got a couple comments related to some of the topics. Regarding the Appalachian Trail, it not only goes all the way to Maine, but into Canada, too. In fact, I have a picture of Brian at the top end of the trail in Quebec. If you ever read the book by Bill Bryson, A Walk in the Woods, and it's excellent, it's about his trek on the Appalachian Trail. The movie with Robert Redford was made from the book. Yes, Lee, yeah, I, I actually didn't know that. Most of the Appalachian Trail through hikers finish up on the highest mountain in Maine, and they might just view it as, I guess, the Maine American portion. So I was surprised to hear that it actually continues. Yeah, I am surprised. I didn't know that at all. Is it still called the Appalachian Trail? I know the Appalachians do go into New Brunswick. so All the way to Quebec, apparently. Quebec, yeah. And uh, I thought that the uh, Bill Bryson book, A Walk in the Woods, was really fun. It's, oh, did you read it? Yeah, it's a great fun read. Ooh. It's easy read. And enjoyed the movie as well. The movie was good. She continues, there was a mention of another picture of Brian in full athletic mode in a pickleball game. Yes, those were the days. We no longer play. We were playing in the advanced leagues, even though it required us being on the courts at 6.30 a.m. right up until early 2020. Then, COVID. Play was suspended for a length of time, of course, and when it resumed, COVID was still happening and we didn't want to be hopping around with a bunch of others breathing heavily in our often small space. So we stayed out for a year. And then because we knew we wouldn't be advanced material at that point and didn't want to go back to intermediate, we packed it in, sold the paddles, and that <laughs> was that. I think it's funny they sold the paddles. I When I read that, I just sort of thought, I haven't sold anything ever. Like, I don't think. I still got, I probably still have a racquetball racket around. I haven't played since the 1980s, I bet you. All right. Continuing on, Matthew Perry. Friends was and is pretty darn good. A lot of it holds up really well, and some of the very best pieces that do are with Matthew Perry in them. I've read his autobiography, and he was just such a lonely, searching person, no matter how rich and famous he got. And the last few years of Friends, they were all getting $1 million an episode. So he became very rich, even before making movies. But drugs and alcohol. He says that in the series, when he's obviously gained weight, he was drinking. And when he looks really skinny, it was drugs. He just couldn't figure out how to be happy. So as not to end on that sad note about him, did you know his stepdad is Keith Morrison of NBC? His real father used to be the old Spice guy in the commercials. 
and his mother was press secretary to Pierre Trudeau. I didn't know any of that. Now you know. Did not know any of that. That is pretty interesting. Thank you, Lee. Uh, Excellent submission. Donna of, I think, Calgary, sister to Glenn of Oak Bay, message came into our inbox, but it says, Hey, Moby, I am watching Arctic Air again. I'm going to say Arctic. Hope you don't mind. She says, You rocking it. I just wanted to say how fun the three of you are doing a podcast together. And thank you for that, Donna. It yeah. is it is fun. We enjoy this time. In the it's chat. especially fun getting notes like that. Mm-hmm. I haven't heard from Donna. I always want to say her last name forever. It was kind of fun, really fun. Yeah, I'm thank glad you. To for hear that. And that just reminds me. Thank you, Donna. Um, that never got any resids from that show. No resids. They haven't been airing it at all, right? <laughs> well, she. Well, like I. She's seen it so much. I, I, I watch it on uh, Tubi in Ottawa, right? Oh. Okay. So I must, I must dig into that. I, I'm sure I've asked about it and somebody told me uh, some sort of answer. What but. the deal is, yeah, because that seems like the kind of show that could air for decades. Wow. Um, it didn't run for as long as something like The Beachcombers. Yeah. How many yeah. seasons? Three. Three. three? Yeah. yeah, they say five is optimal for reruns. How many episodes a season? 13? 10. 10? Great show. Watch it on Tubi so KJ can get uh, not residuals. Non residuals. Non residuals. <laughs> but I'd, I'll have more to back up my argument, though, right? Oh, hey, yeah. Everybody in the whole world has seen it now. Your line? We get mail all the time talking about how much they're enjoying our yeah. Arctic air. Arctic air, yeah. And that is our new form of highly up to date <laughs> listener mail wherein we can actually remember what was said in the episodes that are being referred to. I know. I Thank th- you. It can't Lee. go on Thank like you, this, Donna. listeners. So enjoy this rich experience. <laughs> Yay. Excellent work. I really appreciate those notes. So I got to say, and Lee, especially Lee, yeoman, yeoman service. We had other ones too, didn't we? I believe we did. I believe Jenny, Jennifer of Rosslyn sent us a note saying she would not be in our neighborhood today, but wished us well. Yes. Good to hear from you again, Jennifer. Yeah. And how about K-Chicken? K-Chicken. Yes. I don't know exactly what I was thinking there, but I, I was scrolling through social media the as socials? opposed to yes. socials, you idiot. The socials? Oh, it's socials, isn't it? It's not socials, is it? I'm saying the socials. Oh, geez. You just got to shorten it that much more because that L costs a lot. Yeah. You know what? That's good. The good socials. you're doing that because I'm trying to lose weight. That includes everything on yes. the socials. I don't know. Yes. Which... I'll go with that, Richie. Jeez. Uh, right. <laughs> How can I go on? It's amazing to me that we can just go on after he drops one of those. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. It was somebody who was of Korean origin, I think, was reviewing this chicken place and kind of waxing. In Vancouver? Ecstatic. Yeah. About. Oh yeah. Soon I went to one of those Korean chicken places. Quality of chicken. And this turned out to be called K chicken. It's actually technically in Burnaby, but it's right down near, it's the name of the street. It's. Was it on Kingsway? No, it's in the triangle between the highway and Lowheed highway and Douglas road. It's just off Douglas road. It took me quite a while to even realize in the post that it was local. So it was, you know, I go to Costco all the time. Costco is my kind of go-to thing to do. And I feel like I want to accomplish something, but not really. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like just getting parked at Costco feels like an accomplishment all by itself. Seems, feels like you did something useful with your day to score a parking spot at Costco. And which Costco are you talking about? The Willingdon Costco, oh, gotcha. RJ. <laughs> Still thought, Creek Drive. thought maybe it was the Burnaby Lake one. Yes, I just don't know what you might be thinking. This, I should never leave anything. Planet Earth, that Costco. <laughs> okay. And so I went over there because it was right nearby. And by golly, it was pretty good. I took a couple of pictures. But it wasn't, I didn't think, oh, this is like so different than the chicken. I get. No, it's just chicken. It's deep fried chicken. Okay. Um, did you have much of a choice of vegetables? Not really, no. It, you're basically just eating chicken. Chicken. Bones, Were there fries? Chicken. Nope. Just I just chicken. had the chicken. That's what we found too. When we went to the place, uh, might've been the same one. It's off Kingsway. <laughs> um, same thing. Like just chicken, chicken, chicken. And then, so we ended up ordering something that had chicken with some slaw on it or something. Yeah. Just so we could kind of think that we were getting a little bit of healthy food in there. But Well, uh, and I ordered this thing and I don't know what I was thinking of. Like it was 14 bucks or something. And I actually thought it was going to come with 
stuff. But no, it was just this mountain of like yeah. oversized chicken nuggets. I asked, boneless chicken deep I fried. asked the person oh. at the desk there, what do people have for, what do they have with the chicken? She says, oh, beer. Yeah. Chicken and beer. Yeah. Just for, like Korean. in the K-dramas. Yeah. You know, like, was, it, was it like extra crispy? No, this was just, it was golden something. It was their, their sort of uh, hallmark uh. standard. They had other stuff. I probably could have been quite a bit more adventurous in ordering, but since I have really no clue what differentiates K chicken and what makes a, a real K person say this is super authentic, well, it turns out it's just chicken. <laughs> it seemed like to me anyways, I don't know. I was, the whole thing was a bit weird, but I thought that was worth reporting on. And, and now you know. If you want to have really authentic Korean chicken, that's a good place for it. But be warned, it's a lot like just chicken. <laughs> churches. <laughs> Not churches. My goodness. Hey, I went to that same Costco first time in maybe five years because Susan splits her Costco card with my sister-in-law and I never go for whatever. I don't have a card. so. I, but we did this Christmas thing and I don't know, three, four days before Christmas, Costco opens at 9. So we leave here at 8.30. We're getting there. We get there, and the parking lot is just buzzing and realize that it opened at 8. <laughs> I think we asked oh. somebody, so it opened at 8. So whatever. So we go in, and I cannot, I couldn't believe it. The people in there, I just could not believe it. And well, because they were there well dressed, sophisticated, so many and polite. Is that? So many of them. Yeah. Like I just, I thought, holy shit! Like I, you sort of expect this, and okay. And but what amazed me was there must have been ten percent of the people in there without a cart. Oh, that's rare. Like just, I'm thinking, what are you doing in here without a cart? Like what? And they've got their ten five whatever items oh, they're like they're shopping them. for the day like they're oh. getting their evening meal i think oh uh, yeah, yeah yeah i suppose people you know like there's you can buy produce and like you can get a uh four liters of milk kind of like you can buy smaller things but i just i was amazed 10 percent. do you think really i was well, okay not well five <sighs> anyway i mean the big plus sorry to interrupt but the big plus is it is so much easier to navigate in there without a cart. Like, oh, yes. Man, if you really can just hold this stuff, it is so much easier to get around without a cart. Yeah. Oh, uh, that makes, Thousand times. makes sense to me. Now, we bought lots of stuff. Like, I bought dog food there. And then I'm dreading getting out because that's where the lineups are. Zero lineups. We went right to the cash, right out. Nice. Just like that. And... All the cashiers were obviously oh, open and so, moving. So that's a good time to go. What day of the week was it? If Christmas was Monday. It would have been the Friday or the Thursday. Oh, and it, okay, okay. It could have been the Wednesday, but it was first thing in the morning. Well, you guys may recall Nancy of New West telling us what the optimal hours for attending Costco were. Yeah, and soon I have pretty well followed those uh i have also and i really i think the really sweetest spot is between about 1 15 and about 3 30 oh have i commented to you guys on how much i like costco shoppers no why well i kind of i kind of had this vision that's costco <laughs> it, i kind of you know i'm a bit of a classist you know oh, so you think they're I'm all thinking, like oh, those costco people. people you think they're, they're like walmart you know they're probably kind of yeah yeah they wear really bad clothing choices. They clearly don't pay any attention. And they their... bustle around with their carts. Yeah. And I find that people tend to be, I'm sure there are some exceptions. I'm sure there are some notable exceptions, maybe some anecdotes. People tend to be in a pretty good mood in that store. And some people Actually, are- you know what? You're, I think you're right. Some people why. are a little sluggish with their carts and maybe not that good about pulling over when they stop. And even so, the people are just waiting patiently for them, you know? Like, I'm probably the worst guy in there. Like, I'm I'm doing my, I'm going, oh, okay, there's an opening. I'm in there, and I'm doing my best to kind of go faster. And I'm an anomaly for sure. Everyone's there. They're used to the Costco experience. They're going to do what they're going to do. Well, I was going to throw that into my December 23rd thing as an extra added additional bonus plus. I was going upstream. 
Like yeah. in Costco, there's a definite flow, right? You go in, you yes. go down one aisle, you go around the back and you come up an aisle and you hit the registers and you go out. But if you come in and go over to say where they sell the Tylenol first and then head down, you're going upstream. Everybody's coming at you. And still I was able to just walk right through there. And I, I usually have the hot dogs there. And so a couple times in a row, I've gone straight for the hot dogs. I have a couple buck 50 each couple. Yeah. And, and Sue goes shopping, hero. right? Cause we're there to get my tires changed over. Yeah. And so Sue will go do shopping. I'm going to go eat. And this time she goes, you know what? I'm going to go eat with you. Cause you know, that way we can shop together and all that. So she comes over and we, uh, we place our orders and I'm, she's looking at tables and I said, yeah, we just get our tables. Once we get our food, I'm the old pro, you know? And, uh, and I said to her, oh, the best thing about sitting down at the tables is the conversations you have with people that you don't know. She goes, oh yeah. So we sit down and then an older lady about our age comes up, says, you mind if I sit here? She goes, no, no, absolutely. That's another thing about Costco. There's of course, of course, nobody says, no, I want to sit on my own. And <laughs> you know, people are just nice there. And so she sits down. And the next thing you know, she's telling us about what she's bought, you know, and she says, oh, you should see the underwear. You know, she says, oh, and she says, reach in there, reach in there. And so Sue reaches in and pulls out this is 14 <laughs> pairs here for $12 and they're good quality as well. And she's just, see these and everybody, <laughs> we're just having this wild conversation about ladies underwear. It was just the funnest thing. Well, and also the <laughs> checkout people quite often will say stuff like, Oh, I got some of those. Those are really nice. Yeah, like I got PJs it. for one of the girls, eh? Yeah, yeah. And I had them and say, oh, I got some of those. Those are super comfy. And you you just sort of think, well, now I'm supposed to not imagine you wearing these. Is that what is supposed to happen? Because now I'm thinking about what you look like in these PJs. <laughs> and and are you a good arbiter of comfort or not? For my, I just have, you know, like, what the hell? My brain is all bent by a simple little remark. It, it isn't one of those places, uh, employers of the country or like they they treat their employees rather well i think they do actually they got good benefits good yeah. pay i think they and you see like i've been going to costco for a long time since my second of many marriages and uh i still see some of the same people working in the costcos i go into as i was seeing then and that was 20 years ago mm -hmm. oh wow so you yeah they do i think they do pretty well by their employees in, in that in the food line, at least, you know what I mean? I think the reason people are so pleasant there, cause I don't disagree with you. I think it's because everybody goes in there with a mindset that says they're getting a good deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 It doesn't mean that whether you are or you are not you for whatever reason think so. That's why it's such a common saw to say, Oh man, I went in there for four liters of milk and I spent $300, you know, because you, everything you see, you think is a good deal. So you get it. So before you've actually even got in there, you're thinking, I'm going to get some good deals. This is yeah. awesome. And Sue, you just Sue has to put up stuff. with my running jokes, you know, yeah. as we're walking past the 85 inch TVs, I'm always saying, oh, let's get one of those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Look, $60 off, you know, it's a $3,000 TV or something. Well, like Susan that. picked up a double air fryer while we were there. Ooh. And I was going to actually go upstairs and wrap it. <laughs> I never did. And she said, at Christmas morning, she said, I'm pretty sure I'm going to take that back. It's a double. And she says, there's just actually no room for it. Oh, it's <laughs> the size. I get it. Yeah. It's a huge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I like going there. And uh, a strategy I've used many times in the past. So you guys got to know, it's a fatal error to go into Costco hungry, right? That's a mm, fatal error. Yes, uh, absolutely. Because yeah. you're going to come out of there with a whole roast chicken and an entire half of a pig. <laughs> <laughs> and a couple of bags of apples and a whole bunch of stuff that you just absolutely don't need just because you're hungry. Yeah. yeah. So if you do a dog and a drink before you go in there, that buck 50 saves you probably 70, 80 bucks worth right, of impulse right. purchases. Yeah. <laughs> or in my case, two dogs and a drink. Yeah. It's an interesting place though. Boy, I've bought a ton of stuff there over the year and I have not been really disappointed with any of it really. Yeah, shirts I bought look like normal shirts hey, to me. Sweatpants I'm wearing right now. Yeah, apparently the, apparently the underwear are quite good as well. I've got some Costco branded sweatpants that I, when I when it's going to town time, I put on my Costco branded sweatpants. Your fancy ones. Yeah. Did you 
<laughs> My brother, Sam, Sam of Balfour, who is a listener. Hi, Sam. Hi, Sam. He has had 828 albums. That's about how many I have. I just can't believe. I don't know when he got, because now he's thinking about, he's, he has to prepare to begin to think about moving out of his house and going to some sort of assisted living situation, right? At some point. So yeah. good on him for thinking about that. Really good on him, yeah. I think. I hope I am smart enough to do that when the time comes. I really do. But he's got all these albums. He's trying to get rid of them. And I mean, yeah, he, you know, he lives in a place where there's not a huge market. He found a place like a thrift store that sells all her stuff for charitable purposes who appear to be willing to accept the whole nine yards. And I said, well, perfect. You can offload the whole rest. Mm. Yeah. Well, I just told him you can get it digitally. I made suggestions about maybe take some notes about albums you think you might want to listen to. I asked him the questions about when's maybe. the last time you played any of these? I know it is different. It changes your whole experience, doesn't it? Yeah, there's no ritual at all. There, yeah, it's just so nice to go select an album, put it on. Anyway, it's maybe a yeah. thing to think about for all you people mm. out there with massive record collections that you're going to have to mm. either force your inheritors to deal with. It's One of the foosball players samples about. LPs, so I lent him some of mine. He samples them and then use, creates music with them. <laughs> so listeners, you may not be aware of this, but our podcast is famous for its high sound quality. And that's because RJ just cannot tolerate stuff. I can't tell you how many times I've turned over a, an edited podcast only to hear that he needs back something from me in original form so he can <laughs> redo a terrible edit that I've done. It <laughs> has a big chunk in it. So if you're not hearing chunks and clunks and synth in your thing, it's that's rich. So when you He's tell me you're the guy bumping. who actually went through albums that you were gonna rip and took out clicks and pops oh my goodness that well, just makes my skin well that fall. software was the most amazing it was called click repair and it it's so amazing because the worst kind of software you want just tones down the high frequencies yeah that's to get rid of the crackle and it also wrecks the music yeah this software would read through until it saw a particular jagged waveform yeah and it would just remove it and it would even kind of interpolate from the waveforms before and after to kind of stick a waveform in there. And it was just like perfect. You wouldn't even hear the click or pop. Mm. It was great. That is pretty wild. Pretty good, really. Yeah, it was free. Oh, oh, um, oh we must mention Rob the T from Saskatoon because I was going to mention him last time because it was his birthday that we were going to podcast on last time oh and, that and we bumped. missed out so yes shout out to rob oh he happy birthday i'm sure he's the big, Sorry, rob, the big 7-0 fault. for him is he yeah congrats congrats yeah. that's yep. right Robbie. i guess uh Robbie, baby. tim of durham is headed for that in a matter a mere matter of weeks yeah yeah hmm? it's tim oh it must be my brother too yeah jerry and april yeah it's all happening now oh i tell you what this shuttle gig so getting ready for the shuttle gig, I got out of bed at 6.20 for the three days prior to December 18th. And I took the dogs out at seven o'clock in the morning to walk them so they could get used to it. And I thought, okay, well, that's about as ready as I can get. And the upshot of all that was I learned that there is a vast difference between getting out of bed at 6.20 and having coffee and walking the dogs and then having some more coffee. Yes. And getting out of bed at 6.20, walk the dogs, get in the car, go to work, start working. Yes, exactly. <laughs> oh, man. The first couple, three days, I was yeah. just, so I, I have just a liability on the road, I'm sure, just <laughs> exhausted when I got home at night. I Finally, the third day, I went into work and sort of felt normal. Like, I felt like I was awake and present, not at arm's length with reality. But, oh, geez, what an adjustment. I still find myself pretty tired at the end of the day. And, you know, you think about it, I'm just driving a car around but the hard part is you're on all day you're you're in a thing with strangers and you're trying to be civil and cordial yeah. and not say the wrong thing and also not kill us you, know, you gotta wait till they're out crash. of the car before you have your sips from your flask yeah yeah <laughs> all of it cough horribly because you're still getting over that cough that you had the week before so you've got less than three weeks of more tidbits of the shuttle yeah i think my last day is the 19th of january i think i think there was some talk about a part-time job in parts and i haven't discussed that with anybody Mm. either but yes the getting out of bed thing 
You getting the same pay as before? I got a whopping increase. Inflation. $21 an hour. Oh, that's your new amount. That's my what new amount. What was your amount. old amount? Uh, it was whatever minimum wage was, fifteen seventy five. Oh, so like so you're, now do you still have the same jaundiced view of inflation that it's only the companies making money and the workers are not getting any of it? Yes. Yes, I do. <laughs> Well, Despite evidence to the contrary. No, it's not really, I mean, it's all relative, right? For instance, the cost mm-hmm. of an oil change at Capilano Volkswagen has gone from a hundred and I believe five pre-COVID. You got a, you got a 40% raise, man. Let me finish. Okay. 105 pre-COVID. Uh-huh. Try to guess what it is now. 190? 220. That's the, more than a hundred percent, which is quite a lot more than Oh, okay. The Toyota raise. costs went up 25%. Just- Across the board, yeah. all the standard maintenance is 25%. Yeah. Hopefully I'm not misquoting that, but I, I had a customer, I heard a guy say it and then I had the customer in the car confirm that's what an oil change costs. Mm. And I just think, whoa. And also I'll just say in additional added extra bonus plus food companies, they're well known to have been reporting record profits yeah. in the last year, year and a half. Record profits. Mm-hmm. Oh, but it's inflation that's driving costs up. Oh, it's good that they're driving them up faster than inflation. That's good to know that you're okay. making. Okay. But you got a 40% raise. <laughs> anyway. Did I, did I <laughs> at all insinuate that I was unhappy with my new higher <laughs> wage? Did I? I don't think I did. I'm pretty sure I didn't. So we were getting uh, reminders about Sue's Prius. Uh, hey, you're overdue. Make sure you come in. You don't want to lose your uh, warranty coverage. And Sue puts so little kilometers on that Prius that, uh, we went out to like eight or nine months, I guess eight and a half months and it's supposed to be six. I show up and it's time for service number three. Service number three is the big one. Service number one's a small one. Service number two is a little bit bigger with an oil change. Service back to service one for a small one. And then service number three, which is everything, oil change and everything. And he says, you know what? You're hardly driving this thing. We'll just do an oil change for you. Oh my God. You're kidding. I was quite surprised at that. I'm cause so my friend, Betty, not a listener of North Vancouver. And you know, I hate to think how many people that I like that don't listen to this podcast. And would have benefited from listening because you have, you know, PSAs for them. Was buying a brand new Subaru. And so as a friend, I went to hear what all was said. That question about that came up. Well, what if I don't drive X thousand kilometers yeah. within the six months and the six months come, do I still have to get, yeah, Let I still me, have to get my oil change. Even if I only drive like 2000 kilometers in that first, yep. Yeah. But for context, when did that question come up? When the discussion about buying the car was being had. Like, oh, usually it comes up after you've agreed with a salesperson, <laughs> you go into the back office person who works you over for the extended warranty. And this, this was with the extended warranty guy, well, but it was go. all part of the whole, uh, okay, is she going to buy or is she not going to yeah, buy? Yeah, but it still was the extended warranty guy. But I don't, I don't get your point. Like well, she they want to sell you an extended warranty. So they threaten you, look, doesn't matter how many kilometers you put on, you got to come in every six months. And, but if you buy this warranty, what we do for you is blah, blah, blah. And it just sounds wonderful. Yeah, but it didn't change. The extended warranty only has any impact on anything after the regular warranty has expired. In other words, the conditions of your initial warranty are exactly the same, whether you buy extended or not. If the initial warranty says every six months or 5,000 clicks, that's what it is, whether you have extended or not. Usually extended warranties give you some kind of break on your maintenance costs. I, I didn't and hear so any of that. Well, that's what case. Toyotas do anyway. And yeah. if you buy their platinum one, they're, they're trying to sell you on, hey, we're going to give you free oil changes for whatever. Yeah, none of that yeah. either. I, I was, cause I did ask specifically about that and they just said, no, you got to do it. And he did have some kind of, I thought, lame rationale, like, oh, you know, new, there could be impurities that is just circulating with the oil cause it's newly manufactured and it doesn't really matter if you only drive it a little bit, you want to get that. Well, Which, it is true. The oil, the oil breaks down regardless of whether it's being driven or not. I, uh, yeah. Well, that's not what the guy from my script garage says, but. Do you know if she was using, um, what do you call it? Art of, uh, synthetic. synthetic. They are using, Subaru uses only synthetic. Yeah. And same with Toyota, but to their benefit, they, they give you 16,000 kilometers between oil changes instead of 8,000. And my finding with Honda is they do not. 
Wow, even with synthetic oil. Yeah, they're just terrible. Oh, they're just, yeah, just that is really bad. Just scummy. But yeah, no, it was interesting. That whole business of you got to get it hell or high water, you come in on the dates and you get that done. And I just, yeah. Thought, wow. And I always do wonder, like the service guys, when you show up two months late, they go, ah, don't worry about it. But that's all verbal, right? Yeah. And I think if you have something go wrong yeah, that's related exactly. to those things, exactly, then those service guys aren't in the mix. It's no. head it's head office yeah. that makes the call. It's right? the guy at the desk out front who says, Well, I'm sorry, but you did violate the terms of your warrant. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, yeah, no, I think that's exactly right. It's a scummy business, I think. I did, however, persuade my friend to buy the extended warranty. And that was largely on the basis of agreeing with the extended warranty salesman about the costs of certain repairs. Like when we were younger men, we are still in our prime. Let's be clear on that. But when we were younger, even than we are now, headlight replacement on a vehicle we would own would be pretty insubstantial. You know, it was still more than you, you might, let's say for instance, you spent $30 on a pair of headlights. You know, that sounds ridiculously cheap, but your whole car was only worth $600 or something like yeah, that. Yeah. Well, now, like for instance, on that Subaru. They got to take the engine out. They got to just do all, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It's $1,900 because they have those headlights that turn when you turn the steering oh, yeah, wheel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And getting at all of that stuff to get yeah. the ball, it's just some really Holy involved. Shit. And Dale, not a listener of North Fans, BMW, same thing, 600 bucks just to replace the bulbs in his well, BMW. Yeah. That BMWs are just uh, I mean, money pits. If you can. If you can pony up the dough, they are money pits. Yeah. If you can pony up the dough, do it because you're not going to miss yeah. the dough after it's gone. No, I'm going to completely say the opposite to that. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's, I think you're contractually obligated in this room to I do am. that. I have to so. be the, uh, opposition. <laughs> yeah. So the, those, those are profit centers. They actually do make money on yes. them. They make a profit. That means for every dollar that you spend on them, you get maybe 60 cents benefit. Yeah. On average. Nope, so, that's true. What you're buying is peace of mind. No yeah. Question so, about it. so if you're the kind of person that really worries about that stuff, by all means yeah. buy them. But if you're, especially if you're young right now, you're 25 years old, you got a whole lifetime ahead of you, you will not believe how much money you're going to save by yeah. never buying extended warranties. Yeah. And, but it, it is the same argument and you will be pleased to know I did point that out. Look, yeah. this extended warranty thing, it's a money maker. And after 10 years, you're so far ahead that if you do have a repair, you mm. just mentally in your head, you go, yeah, but you know, this repair is being yeah. paid for by the savings I had over the last two years. Yeah. And I, I, I still think it would come down to, like for people, for normal people, Rich, who aren't like you, they don't bank that money. Well, right? it's not that it's, yeah, they don't bang it, but they do something with it. Yeah. They so spend they get, it on beer. Oh, okay. If you, if you're spending it on beer, then yeah, Sure. I guess it's a cash it means thing. that you spend that money and you're not going to buy some useless stuff. Yeah. Not saying beer is useless. And I would but. say for normal people, that is not the case. Oh, yes, for yeah. I would say about 95% of everybody on earth, whether it's at Kingsway or not, they are not saving that money. Yeah. Or if you're, or if you're buying useful things with it, like food for the family. Yeah. Or, you know, things that are of value uh, or a nice vacation. Yes. Those are things that... Or, Beer was a figure of speech. All I'm saying is you can't convert those useful things that you bought over that period into those new headlights. You're going to have to pony up the You're going to have to pay for it and yeah. maybe live without some nice vacations for the next year Yeah, or whatever, but you're, you're going to be way ahead yep. by not buying them. I'll also agree yours is the wise and prudent course. I'm just pointing out that that's seldom the course normal people take. The principle in insurance is... Don't buy an insurance unless you can't afford. <laughs> so if you're, if you get hit with a $2,000 bill, repair bill, and you're screwed, then yes, buy that insurance. Yeah. And in only my... buy insurance when you can't afford the yeah. other, like for example, with, uh, with literal insurance, I always bought the $1,500 deductible Yeah, because I can come up with $1,500 yeah. in a pinch. Yeah. And it saved so much money over 34 years. And my friend that I counseled could afford it. And it was a hundred percent about worry, worry. Yeah. Do you want to think about it or do you not want to think about yeah, it? Yeah, that's true. And if you want to not ever think about it, just give them the money and forget it. And then, yeah, and speaking of thinking about it, if you're driving an EV, I guess you're watching carefully to make sure you don't bottom it out, eh? 
I guess. Do they catch on fire if you do that? Oh, uh, no. It was in the news recently. Someone bought themselves a really nice EV mm-hmm. and they hit a bump kind of hard. So it hit into the bottom protector plate mm-hmm. of the battery because the battery is along the entire bottom of the car and it got a dent in it. And then they were having some electric issues. Don't know what they were, but they were having some electric issues. And so the repair bill came in $60,000. Oh, that's oh, what that, that I've yeah. seen the headline, but not bothered to read it. Cause I yeah. just don't care. You know, like, I think you're right. I think you're right not to care because it's, it's interesting to talk about and it's shockingly expensive, but this car has been out for about this particular model has been out for 18 or 24 months now. And this is the first time it's been in the news. There are a lot of them on the roads. So it's one of those situations where sure it's a big impact, but how often does this actually happen? Yes. And ICBC was unable to say, we don't actually keep stats on it. So they wouldn't comment on how often it is. So anyway, just something to. They to probably heard. don't either. You could probably run a special job and figure it out, but I, maybe not even that. Cause it's probably just collision. It's just a collision. Yeah. It's That's probably not interesting. Clear. I didn't know, like I just saw the headline ignored it, but you wonder how hard you have to hit for that to happen. I read that insurance companies are worried. They don't want to ever have a situation where a repair is done and then the person gets electrocuted. Mm. Yeah, or, that would or, be bad. you know, like something really, really bad for business. Um, I th- so what's been happening, I read, is that insurance companies in general are just totaling anything that has battery problems. They just announce that it's a total, like physical damage. Uh, yeah. Have you guys seen the Cybertruck on the road? No, have you? Uh, Dylan saw one. Oh, he saw one. Downtown. Huh? He took a picture of it, actually, or yeah. Yeah. a little video of it. Haven't seen it yet. They're out there, apparently. They are so ugly. Did they you? Are. They're speaking of those. Have you guys seen? I saw. So, so you feel the Rivians look better than that? Yes, I do, actually. And the Rivians are pretty weird looking, too. <laughs> I just think they look better than that stupid Cybertruck. I saw a video of a guy put up on social media. On the socials. Thank yeah. you. And he was. He had a, he has a Rivia, no, uh, te- Tesla truck, whatever you call it. A cyber truck? Cyber truck. And he's going up a slope and it looks kind of slopey and kind of bumpy. And the thing's just slithering around and slewing back and forth and the wheels are spinning off and on. He's really having a hell of a time getting up there, right? But he gets up there and then he, the next thing is, He's driving a VW micro bus up there uh-huh. and it's just walking up the hill. Oh, <laughs> just, okay. The bumps are going, the vans rocking oh, okay. back and forth, but it's going straight and the wheels are not skidding. And it sounds like it's in second gear or something. And it's yeah. what this hill, it just, oh God, I laughed. It was really funny. That cyber truck was just struggling up there. And, uh, yeah, I think they're, I think they're a fool in his money is the story on those things. One of the podcasters I listen to lives on Fire Island off Long Island and it's uh, sandy beaches. And in order to drive to there, it's his summer place, I guess. In order to drive there, they have to drive along the beach. Mm. And uh, he's been through a few different vehicles and he always talks about pros and cons and stuff. And his latest vehicle has been a Rivian. Yeah. And he says, it's just amazing. Like it's just, he feels so confident. He just goes places and it just works just phenomenal. But the other day he was, uh, you have to go along the beach and then you go through a gate back onto the roadway Yeah, to finish the trip, I guess. And the gate had, the gate was closed and it said, use the, use a different one. So he turned around to go back to the last gate, you know, cause yep. they're every hundred 200, 300 feet or something. And he's been overconfident. And so he just, he did a three point turn and then he got off into the deeper sand because there's tracks yeah. along the beach. Yeah. Right? And it was a particular day there had been storms and I guess the dunes had like, yeah. there was a lot of sand. And he said he made the immediate rookie mistake because he was so confident. Oh, he just gunned it. Yeah. He just gunned it and it's just <laughs> down low, right? <laughs> 7,000 pounds Rivian, right? Yeah, they're really, yeah. I've, he's got his wife and his daughter with him. And uh, then he's he's thinking, I got this, you know, because he's he's prepared. Yeah. He's got those special tracks you lay down under. Yeah. Can, but he had gone down so low and the Rivian got confused because you can actually raise it too, right? 
Oh, that's, yeah. that's pretty important. You know, you raise it up. But yeah, it's high bottom. It got confused because I think this is not something they tested for. And there was sand up in the wheel wells touching stuff. And he would try and raise it and it would say obstruction, you know, won't do it or whatever. So then they're out shoveling, right? They're just yeah. shoveling. And he said 7,000 pounds. You wouldn't believe how hard it is to pull the sand out when it's the body is actually on the sand at this point. And then the, the oh. mayor drove by and, and towed him out with like a Jeep. Well, just a fun <laughs> thought though. You know, lots of guys that are doing stuff get winches. Yeah. And the winches are rated for certain weights. And you said, sort of think, well, how about if I stick a winch on the front he, of a three and a half ton truck? And he said he looked it. at a winch and uh, it was just ridiculously expensive was one thing. And the other thing is when you're driving on sand, it's surprising how few anchors there yeah. are that you can actually tie the winch up. That to. also makes sense. Yeah. To my great surprise, we've come to the end of an episode, evidently. And I'm supposed to say something along the lines of, goodbye, take care of yourself, take it easy, come back again. So that's what I'm doing here. The tone of puzzlement in my voice is that we've already arrived at the end of an episode. It just seemed like a snap of a finger since I was doing an intro. Anyway, we are at the end. We hope you had fun. We did. And we'll be back. Oh, we have. We'll be back. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye.